हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज सेमन एनालिसिस ओके नाउ व्हाट यू नीड टू नो इज यू नो द पार्ट्स ऑफ द स्पर्म राइट इन सेमन व्हाट ऑल यू विल एग्जामिन एंड व्हाट आर द सॉरी एंड व्हाट बेसिकली यू आर लुकिंग फॉर इज द स्पर्म काउंट राइट स्पर्म काउंट द मोफोलॉजी एंड द स्ट्रक्चर right so what is it basically used for you should know what are the indications so basically this is used to uh, investigate for infertility that is the most important thing okay and then you have other indications also mainly to check for the effectiveness of vasectomy uh, suppose when they do a vasectomy as a part of uh, um, i mean as a part of sterilization initially it was done earlier it was done even now some areas they still practice it you can see the effectiveness mm -hmm. by detecting the uh, presence of sperms in it okay then in case especially in cases of medical legal cases okay in cases of rape and all those all those crap right then you also require for selection of the donor in cases of uh, assisted insemination okay and other selected uh, other assisted reproductive technologies also you can use um, semen okay now that is an important thing now in semen analysis basically you will determine for first i told you it is mainly for infertility to identify the cause of infertility because infertility is a rising cause for rising cause these days right now um, so um, what all will you check in that you have sperm production patency of the ducts okay patency of the male ducts functions of the accessory glands and the ejaculatory function so these are the things what you will you will from that semen you can identify all these things right so what we request uh, our patients is for um, you require each each sample will vary okay like uh, you require two or more three samples to say that the person have for accurate uh, treatment basis also that is important okay and for, for to to know the effectiveness of vasectomy you actually require 6 weeks duration that is you can't do it immediately after vasectomy you have to wait for another 6 weeks and then you give the report right so what you know the different methods for uh, collection okay then uh, most common one is routinely employ employed one and then you have uh, coitus interruptus or coitus using a um, silicone rubber or whatever things okay and there are assisted ejaculation methods also right so now that you have collected the sample or the patient has collected the sample what is the next thing you will do you will you can ask uh, the patient or tell them to bring the sample immediately that is within 1 hour of collection that is a thing you will tell them okay and uh, um, another instruction has to be that has to be given us in this generally requires 2 to 3 days of abstinence okay only then you will get that proper count right and it should be collected in a clean dry sterile leak proof bottles or plastic wide mouth plastic bottles okay then uh, what do you do you keep it for 20 to 30 minutes ideally that is the normal liquefaction time okay and then you mix the sample ideally we have to mix the sample thoroughly using a pipette and then we check for so many entities are there according to who there is a set of guidelines of as to what all investigations or what all you will check in that particular sample so initially you will have sample volume viscosity ph appearance liquefaction mm, then the concentration morphology which is very very important vitality okay wbc how many wbcs are present and then you have the motility all these things should be covered in a particular analysis okay 
so this is how you will uh, tell the patient okay give them a wide mouth uh, container and uh, with two to three days of abstinence clean environment they should collect the sample right and these are the parameters you will check for so what is the normal uh, volume it is usually more than or equal to 1.5 to 2 ml that is the normal volume and it is uh, appearance is usually opaque gray white okay and it is invariably it is a viscous sample usually it is initially viscous and uh, liquefaction time it takes around 20 to 30 minutes that is a normal liquefaction time okay and uh, normal pH is between 7.2 to 8 or anything it is basically a slightly alkaline okay and uh, what is this uh, concentration sperm concentration it is usually more than or equal to 20 million per milliliter that is very important for you should know them okay and morphology more than 30 percentage of sperms will have normal morphology that is the normal uh, analysis okay then vitality more than 75 percent should be vital or should be alive okay that is the normal count now right now they have changed it to 58 percent mm -hmm. even that is applicable okay and uh, morphology again it is important right then the wbc count wbc counts are usually usually it is less it is less than 1 million okay 1 million per ml a unit is always the same and then motility is important very very important you can grade the motility according to its uh, movement okay mm -hmm. so you have usually you should get more than 25 percent rapid progressive that is the normal uh, motility okay so you have rapid progressive okay slow progressive <coughs> sorry and mm -hmm. gradually progressive okay so these are the uh, that's how you will grade mm? so rapid progressive is when you examine the slide it goes into the uh, extreme edge of the slide or extreme edge of the cover slip that is how it is you see one one glimpse of it and it swims and it reaches the other end that is how you will detect it okay so that is your rapid progressive movement now so you need to know some of the terminologies this is easy for you to remember i'll just tell you the general terms okay not the complicated ones sorry okay we'll go to the terms so first is oligospermia okay oligospermia is nothing but the sperm concentration is less it is uh, less than uh, 20 million per ml or less than 15 million per ml that is oligospermia okay then you have uh, asthenosperm asthenospermia is nothing but reduced sperm motility okay aspermia is generally absence of ejaculate there is no ejaculate at all these are the uh, um, and um, I mean uh, important entities which you should know then you have asthenospermia asthenospermia is again reduced motility okay then uh, teratozoospermia is sperms having abnormal morphology the morphology is abnormal okay so this is the uh, teratoz is abnormal morphology anything abnormal in the morphology you call it as teratozoospermia right then aspermia is absolutely absence of ejaculate there is no volume at all okay then you have uh, leukocytospermia that is wbc is more than more than 1 million that is your leukocytospermia then you have this entity called as you're combining all the three together that is oligoestinozoospermia oligoestino and teratozoospermia all the three together so that means all these three together okay so that all the three together is basically indicating that all sperms with variable and abnormal morphology okay mm -hmm. then you have something called as Necrozoospermia, that is all the sperms are non-motile or they are basically non-viable. Okay, so these are the general terminologies which you should know. Okay.